What's up, everybody? It's your boy, The Lion, here with BW Sports 1, and we are here with another episode of Combat Zone, powered by Karma Coin. Check out the cryptocurrency that gives away to charities and gives you a chance to win supercars. KarmaCoin.co today. Elite Performance 765-499-1005 with a dream of elite fitness becomes a reality. Call Zach today and get started on your journey. Revved up tattoos, 317-537-2667. Book your next ink therapy session with our boy Todd over at Revved Up Tattoos. You won't be disappointed. Bomb Burgers, that's right. 7960 US 31 South in Indianapolis. Famous for steak burgers, but these, they are the bomb. Be Lit Organics, our girl Brittany Carino has got all the natural products, phenomenal feeling, soaps, bath salts, candles, you name it, she's got it. Be Lit Organics. Round one, fight. Welcome again to another edition of Combat Zone, and today we have El Bandito. El Bandito. What's happening, brother? How we doing? Chilling, man. Sitting here poolside. All the ducks left, but I'm just sitting here hanging out poolside, about to do an interview with, with you, bro. Just hanging, man, in between sessions. Just yeah. super excited about these fights, man. Ready to go. Yeah. Well, I mean... <laughs> So not everybody knows you. You know, you're popping your cherry here at Combat Zone. So not everybody at BW Sports yeah. One World knows kind of what your background is in combat sports. Why don't you give us a little uh, journey through the career of Elvin Brito? It's been a really long career, man. I've been it's a it's a it's a blessing, you know. It's a blessing that I'm able to uh, I'm I'm able to just keep this fight career going and be able to fight at the highest level. You know, I started as an amateur boxer. I was 16. That was 20 years ago. I started uh, almost 20 years ago, uh, and I started just because I was a little fat kid and wanted to get in shape. I needed to do something, so I went. I went into a community center, uh, similar to the community center that we're building right now, uh, and I just did some free classes with a coach that was willing to work with with the with the youth, you know. And uh, he was a great coach. You know, I lost my first three fights as an amateur, you know, and then I went on a, a seven fight winning streak, and then I was going back and forth. I ended up being 37 and nine as an amateur. Won 14 and 2 in Puerto Rico, um, you know. And as I was building myself as an amateur, I moved out. I moved out to the United States, started uh, fighting for a promotion with one of my friends who was an MMA uh, promoter. I didn't really know too much about MMA at the time. Um, didn't know anything, um, and I got invited to fight MMA, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to do it. They convinced me to do it. You know, I did I did great for about like 20, 30 seconds. So the guy told so so the guy went for a double leg, you know, and I had no idea what a sprawl was. <laughs> They're like, sprawl, sprawl. I'm like, well, what's that? <laughs> you know, um, the guy took me down, you know, I somehow ended like I was able to reverse him, somehow ended up uh, in his guard, and you know, I I know I should have like I knew I was in a good position, you know. I just didn't know what I was doing, you know, and and, right. and I was like, Man, I know I'm in a good, you know, I'm I'm always the type of fighter who's always like thinking when he's fighting, I'm like, I know I'm in a good spot, but like, I really don't know what I'm doing. You know, the guy ended up reversing me uh, and I ended up getting rear naked choked right after being on top of the guy. Uh, I had my own reverse just instinctively. Um, it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. And I really liked it, you know? And I was like, man, that wasn't as hard. I did good for, you know, not really knowing what the hell I was doing. I came back, fought, uh, you know, I had a three fight uh, winning streak as an amateur starting. I was getting a lot of knockouts. I was ended up being uh, I was nine nine and uh, nine and five as an amateur, but I you know I had a lot of knockouts. All my losses were decisions. Uh, all I had a lot of uh, a lot of fight of the nights. You know, a lot of exciting fights. People always liked the way I fight. You know, and it got to the point where I got 
kicked out of the amateur circuit. They're like, dude, you got to go pro. You know, you're ready to do this. So I went pro. You know, I went 7-0 before I took my first loss, fighting for a, a, a title fight at 145, a division I never fought in, against another guy who was a, a, a 145 champion already, uh, Sean Soriano. And okay. uh, it was just, you know, it, it was too much for me. You know, that cut, and, and it's not that, that, you know, for me to make that cut, and I really didn't un didn't understand because everybody's like, oh, when you're doing so good at 155, you should cut to 145. You know, you're gonna be stronger and faster. You know, and you know, everybody. I don't come from a wrestling culture, so I, I I'm like, I don't want to cut that much. But eventually, I was doing so good, I took the advice. I'm like, okay, I'll go to 145. Oh, everybody has good meaning, but I'm fighting a champion who's also 70, and he's been fighting 145 his whole career. You know, and at 145, every weight division. It, the statistics, it, it changes the fight, you know, like the guys at 145 fight different at 155, we're fighting different 170 guys, you know, you, uh, they're hitting hard, they're moving different, you know, and, and, and um, I felt like I had given up all the good things of, of that I got at one because I was smaller at 155, but I felt like I was giving up everything that made me a unique fighter by dropping all that weight, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I went back up to 165, I, 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 you know, I've, been, I've fought a lot of uh, great competition, you know, fairly good success, good reputation in fighting. Um, always been a game opponent, always a bandido, you know, always trying to steal a show. I got the opportunity to fight Bare Knuckle from Dean Tool, Island Fights. He was doing matchmaking with BKFC3. And uh, and I was like, hey, man, they they might like me. You should you should, uh, you should get a hold of them and give my name, throw my name in there. And he gave my name. Dean Tool always give him thanks every time I guys. Um, he gave my name and they called me two weeks before the fight. Like, Hey, you want to fight a guy? I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll take a fight. Yeah. It's a local guy. <laughs> yeah. They put me against, uh, Harris Stevenson who, who, uh, he, you know, he was one and all at the time, you know, fastest, one of the fastest knockouts. And, and he's a huge 165er, you know, and I came in there and, uh, they're expecting me to lose that fight, you know, and I came in there and, uh, you know, just typical El Bandido fashion, just took it from him and gave him a great show. Show you know, show that I have some understanding of the skills. You know, um, came back from that fight. Um, I fought Jim Allers second fight. Got caught early. Didn't really get to fight with Jim, which is really I think almost like the first punch he landed. You know, just tap, but got me around the info orbital and knocked me out. It didn't really knock me out, but you lose muscle. You lose muscle function when you get hit in the oh, info yeah. orbital nerve. So like you can't do anything. So didn't get the fight. Had to scratch that. You know, but really look, man, when I lost, when I lost to. Uh, when I lost to Jim Allers, is when I realized, like, even though I lost, I was my I was one and one at the time. I realized that I really do like. I'm like, dude, I'm starting to fall in love with this. Like, I really, I really like this, you know, because I, so I didn't. That get, was the point in your career. I was career, like, it's yeah, like, okay. like, I could see myself. Yeah, I could see myself doing this, you know, and 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 when I fought Palomino, and especially just the allure of making money, doing what I do best, it, it, it was great for me, you know. Um. Like I said, every fight is a lesson learned for me. You know, this is like fighting is life to me. So, um, and then Palomino was another great lesson for me. I fought, we had a three five, you know, we had a five round fight. It was a great technical battle. Uh, no really big shots were landed, but um, I uh, I did learn. You know, I have great defense, but defense is not good enough to to win the fight. And you have to have a reason to fight. You can't just go out there to fight. To cup of, cup of, put a couple bucks in your pocket that's when you're fighting for for championships when you're fighting to be the best fighter in the world it, it, money's not going to be enough that's not enough of an incentive um so it, it, it was a it was a fight where i was able to come home i didn't really take it too much as a loss more like a learning experience but i didn't really get hurt you know i didn't really get hurt i i found out real early i'm like oh this guy can't hurt me and i was just cruising but because of that i was like man i didn't I didn't even get tired. I wasn't hurt. Like I need a reason. You know, I was able to come home and, and fabricate a reason, you know, for why I could, why I need to fight and need to win and put it on the line and, and, and be willing to bleed for it. And, you know, obviously, you know, use, use what I do, do what I do. Great, my great move. But there gets a time in every fight where you have to, you got to lay it on the line. You got to be willing to do it all. So, you know, we've, I feel like we found that now with the trajectory they're trying to build, we build ourselves, you know, we're doing the jungle camp, for the professional fighters is a place for guys to come over here and do our training camps. We got the community gym that we're trying to do to help our community and, and mm -hmm. for a new, for a new, uh, uh, for a new generation of fighters and for just to help, uh, so the kids, give the kids and the family somewhere to go where it's actually positive. And we're making the house for, 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 
my family and for my kids. And we got all these plans for the future with all these different people. And now, now I have to do this. You know, now, now, now you I can't found commit. your why. Yeah. Now I can't miss. Now I'm like, I got to win. You know, I got all these people depending on me. I got all these people coming out here to train with me. You know, I got, you know, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's been, a, you know, every fight is, is, is like, I'm learning for myself. Same, same thing when I fought, when, and then I, after I fought, when I fought, um, uh, uh Caleb you know, Caleb Harris, you know, it was it was like, yeah, I mean I'm, I was like, okay, yeah, I got it. This is, you know, it's not a fluke. You know, I'm I'm good. I, I'm hard to hit. You know, I hit hard and I'm a problem for anybody. You know, um and you know and and then um coming into to the Brad uh Brad Kelly training camp, having all these different guys come out here. And, 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 you know, experience the stuff that we're doing, see see the work that we do, the ethic that we do in our work. And people, you know, everybody's like, holy shit, dude, this is fucking awesome. You know, and then, you know, accepting that, hey, you got to, at some point, you got to answer the call. That phone could be ringing all day. You know, but unless you want to answer that call and, and really, you know, and, and be brave and, and, and be able to lay it on the line, you're not going to be able to do anything, you know. And that's how I feel now. Like I got, I'm really excited about this fight. I just found out last week that I'm two weeks out, not three weeks out. <laughs> I didn't get nervous. I was like, oh, shit. Like, oh, man, let's do more another lap. I didn't feel like that. I was like, right. oh, damn, man. it's almost here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's almost time now. Like, now all this work, I, I don't have to work no more. I don't have to do some get up every morning. I don't have to grind. I don't have to do all this stuff that I don't like to do. And I can just do what I like to do is just fight and get it over with, you know, and move on to the next guy. This guy's in my way. Um, he's a first time fighter. Um, he has a respectable career uh, as a professional. And the guy's, gonna, I'm sure the guy's going to come to fight, but I, I can't let him, you know, he's in the wrong place in the wrong time. Like he, I can't let him take this away from me. I worked way too hard. And while he's been thinking about coming back, while he's been thinking about like reliving the glory days, I've been out here busting my fucking ass, hurting, hurting for money, hurting physically, not knowing what I want to do, working, you know, and I'm, I'm not, gonna, this guy's not going to stop me. He's, I'm, he's going to, I'm moving him out of my way and I'm moving on to the next guy, you know? I love it. I love yeah. it. That's what you yeah. got to do now. Yeah. Elaborate a little bit more for everybody to know what you got going on with that community center. Cause that's a great idea, obviously. Yeah. It's going to help. Yeah. It's a great idea. It's like something that we've been wanting to do. When I first got back, you know, there's nowhere to train here locally. We go to Arroyos two times over. It, they're, they're old family. They're like an extended family of us. This whole region, we have a lot of very similar fighting style. We've all trained with each other. Um, they all know me. This guy used to corner me as a, when I was a professional MMA fighter in Puerto Rico fighting for top combat. So, you know, they accept us. They have, we have great students, people uh, trained there. But uh, we want to have a place for our people, you know. And, and I was that's what I was telling the mayor. I was like, now, when I was in Illinois, they gave us a space and we were able to make champions, you know. And then when we went to Florida, we had a little bit of space, a little bit of time. And we were able to make all these great things with Scott. Me and Scott Farley, in a year, we were able to do so much, which is a little bit. You know, I was like, it, for, for everybody, I was like, give me the opportunity to, to, to use my talent here where I want to spend it. That's why I came to Puerto Rico. You know, I was like, you need... Why spend it somewhere else if I could spend it here where they need it? There's nowhere else. It's uh, it's something that when I was a, when I was a kid, I, I I didn't pay for my training. Um, and our plan is to open. Uh, they gave us the, the the place to do it, so we're gonna open a community training center. It's a training facility. We're gonna be doing free classes for all kids from six to eighteen. Boxing and jujitsu four days a week. We're gonna be doing adult classes. We're gonna be doing extra classes. We're gonna be doing M MMA classes, fighters classes, self defense. We're gonna be doing women's fitness. We're gonna be doing family nights, movie nights, fight nights, uh, fundraisers. It's all community stuff. You know, places where the family can send their kids to feel safe, where places can go. You know, uh, 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 you know, I, something that we, it's something that we, we I had that when I was a kid. You know, and uh, it's something that we don't have anymore. And that's something that I want to get to the community. It's my gift back for all the all the all the blessings that I've had in my life. You know, I, I'm I'm not perfect. I've done a lot of, you know, I've done a lot of messed up stuff in my life too, and and I've been able to bless with the opportunity over and over to, to redeem myself. You know, and so this is a, for me a way to pass it forward. You know. Well, I love the idea and concept, brother. Yeah. I hope it goes well for you. Now I will. It will. Oh, it will. That's the mentality. To have. 
Now, we hear the roosters in the background. Yeah. We see you headbutting goats online. Let's <laughs> talk about this jungle camp you got going on down there. What all do you guys do down there besides run your asses up steep hills and headbutt goats? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, this is the, it's the idea that we have for a long time. It's, it's, it's the opportunity that we, we just snatched. You know, um, we have a perfect place for bare knuckle training. Um, it's a, always been Puerto Rico. If you look on, uh, you know, any of the uh, uh, greats, they'll tell you Puerto Rico is a great place to train for, for for boxing fights. Everybody knows how to box in Puerto Rico. This isn't boxing though. This is fighting. Puerto Ricans know how to fight too. But um, I, I think the environment, the way we approach the fighting, the the way that we, you know, we 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 center our all our training around bare knuckle. You know, we 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 do a lot of almost everything bare knuckle. You know, the only thing we do gloves really is. Is spar. spar, yeah. We spar bear. Oh, we, we can't because we can't spar bear and uncle. But we spar, we toe the line and every round, and we spar with the mental, like you know, with that me- that mode that you don't have gloves on, you know. We're not gonna sit there like a boxer and go, you know, smash your hands, you know, right? You're not gonna just pop, 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 you know, you're gonna be like, bah, 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 bah. you know, you're fighting and pushing, and you let them know it's a fight and it's not boxing match. And, uh, we 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 work on the different concepts of blocking and, and the difference uh, and the um the difference between boxing where you have to worry about your hand position compared to bare knuckle where you have to worry about your your uh, wrist alignment and, and knuckle position um and uh just the difference in damage and the impact you know the, the 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 understanding of the sport the respect of it so when you go out there you're not fucking looking like most of these guys and look shocked you know the right. look of shock that you see so much in Baron Uncle where you really didn't you really thought that was gonna be boxing with the gloves off, you know. You right. really thought it was gonna be just like MMA. You thought he was gonna come in here and he was just gonna smash everybody, right? A little bit more <laughs> hitting it. Right. So this is a that's a good place. So it's just like come out here in the jungle with some really hard training, really hard guys to train with, and just you know, it's just like give yourself a reality check, you know. <laughs> one of these days, like I was telling you before we we started, one of these days I'm gonna come down there, but my fat ass don't run. I mean, no, I'll, no. I'll, I'll do get... a lot of I'll do a lot of other stuff. I got a guy gonna, gonna get you a go kart. I'm gonna yeah, scooter. Gonna have, I gotta have, have the scooter powered up, ready yeah. for you. Bro, yeah, I'm gonna have the video camera, video yep. <laughs> all you guys sweating your ass off. I'm gonna I'll be I'll be sweating. Yeah, don't running. worry. You gonna get? I'm gonna get you a <laughs> meaty. I'm meaty. I don't have to do this. Yeah. Now let's kind of go down the line of your opponents in bare knuckle. Um, who do you think was the toughest opponent that you faced so far in your bare knuckle career? Um, the hardest, well, the, t- the toughest and the hardest is different. The, the okay. toughest guy was definitely Brad Kelly, the last fight. He's, he was, he's one of those, like, you know. He it, doesn't quit. Yeah, and, and, you know, I have guys like that that I train with, too, um, that prepare me for stuff like that, you know. I just, where well, I'm like, I'm just trying to hit him as hard as I can, and just won't stop coming forward, you know. And the guy like that will break you if you're not ready. Um, yeah. And and um, and um, I had to be mentally and physically prepared to just keep putting it on him and without a pause. And it was, I had this this like spider sense awareness constantly in my mind where I was just like, if you slow down, this dude's gonna club you, you know. Right. I, so so it was for me that that he was a tough opponent because he never let up, he never gave me a break. And he was always in my face, and 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 yeah. and I was hitting him as hard as you can. And even a person like me who make adjustments, you know, I punch you in the forehead once. I'm like, okay, and I'll make adjustment. I'm gonna punch you in the forehead again. But like, if you're hitting a guy like 50 punches around, and he just keeps coming forward, dude, your hands eventually are gonna get tired. You know, right. even if you're even if you're a surgeon like me, you know. And luckily that I was able to really, it didn't hurt my hands. But I know Brad Kelly is going to be a serious problem for anybody coming forward, especially if they're not prepared, if they're not surgical, if they think they're just going to go in there and beast it, you know, it's going to suck. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> you know, but uh, the, the hardest fight was my first fight because I didn't know what I was getting into. I, I, I had a pretty good concept I was getting into. Um, and, um, I, and I really think that the advantage that I had in my first fight is that I knew it wasn't going to be bad boxing. A lot of people think it's going to be boxing. I went back and studied the fights. I went back and looked at the old pictures. And if you watch my first fight, I came out old school. You know what I'm saying? Knuckles out, both hands, shutter guard, you know? Uh, and I knew to respect the game and not to, you know, not to rush anything. But 
uh, uh, Harris Stevenson, he's huge, you know? He, he's huge, and every time he hit me, it, it, it like, rocked me, you know? Every time he hit me, it hurt. And um, and he, he would, he would he you know, similar to Brad Kelly, you know what? He's a cop, and he's he, he's not one of those, uh, you know, he, he, there's different kinds of cops, you know, but he, he's, he's gangster, bro. Like, he's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's gangster, man. Like, he, he was not going to let up, you know? He's not going to let up unless you put him away, you know? Right. And uh, I think Brad, I think he might have hit me more than anybody else. My first fight uh, was was uh, Harris Stevenson, and he, I was hurting for for a while, for like a month or two after that. He punched me right in the clavicle in the second round, um, and uh, it was like, you know, when I when I got done with that fight, I was like, this is real, bro. <laughs> I'm like, this is, <laughs> this is not a joke. Like, you could break bones, they could right. break your face, you could break your hands. Get out of here, Pancho. He's messed with the stand. <laughs> right, right, check this out, Pacho. You see him? Oh yeah, that's that buddy. That's my boy. Yeah, he's my boy. He got the whole trip here with him. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is when we talk goat combat. This right here is it. Yeah, right? yeah. Now you know where the name comes from. <laughs> Hell yeah. So yeah. let's kind of move now into this upcoming fight. Just in two weeks, not three weeks, Elvin. Just in two weeks, you'll be. Oh fighting. yeah, stop, punch. Julio uh, Garcia. Yeah. Obviously. Uh-oh. Sorry. He's wanting the headbutt. Go, yeah, Look yeah. at him go. Yeah, it's all good. I got, I'm good. good. I'm just going to have to use my hand now. <laughs> uh, so, right. Julio Garcia, you know, what are you what are you kind of uh, seeing happening with this fight compared to anybody else that you fought? Do you see this being any different? Obviously, he's coming in. He's a, I don't want to call him a rookie. You know, because he's had many fights outside of bare knuckle, but no, he's a veteran. I mean, he's an amateur in bare knuckle, but he's a he's definitely a veteran. Right. So, what do you what do you anticipate in this fight being? I know this guy's gonna be tough, and I know he's gonna give me everything he got in that first round. You know, and uh, and I know he'll be ready to fight championship rounds because he's a you know he's a professional. But um, I'm gonna be ready. You know, like right now, this fight this is the kind of fight where like I don't like these kind of fights. You know, like I wanna I wanna. I want to fight this dude, and, and, and I want to I want to show all the hard work that I've been doing. But I, this guy is, you know, this is his first time coming in, Grand Uncle. He's got a hell of a welcoming party. Um, but I can't allow him to beat me. I can't allow him to walk in here and, uh, you know, and take my space that I've been working so hard to do. You know, Grand Uncle is not an easy sport. It's going to be my sixth fight. We're fighting real hard, and, and um, I've been very patient. So my plan is to take him out as fast as I can. I want to let people know that I'm 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 the champion and I'm going to be the guy to beat. You know. Well, speaking of, I mean, if you get this win, or I'm sorry, your my, your mentality when you get this win. Oh, we're gonna win. That's gonna be three o. That's gonna be a three fight win streak. Yep. Where four are you looking at? Yeah, where are you looking at after that? Are you well, that's four. At, that's four. That's four and you know that's four and oh, uh, That's four and two total. Four and oh at, at sixty five. I've shown no one. No one has a no one's three and no one 165 mm -hmm. already. Uh, 165 is a hard division with the guys that are there now. I feel bad for anybody having to walk into this division now, you know, because uh, there's not a lot of guys in this division. But the top 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 five is gonna be a hell of a fucking climb, you know. Yeah. Because uh, you got guys that got six, five, you know, five, six, seven fights, you know, it's it's gonna be a hard room to walk into when you got a whole bunch of just hardened killers in there with you, you know. Do you uh, like being? Do you like being the? Uh... The welcoming committee for for new bare knuckle guys such as Julio in this one. It's kind of cruel, but you know I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing my job, man. I'm just doing my job. I don't pick my opponent, you know. Right. But I'm not. I'm not gonna. You know. I'm. I'm a nice guy, but it's never fun to fight me. Nobody ever looks forward to fighting me or fighting me again. Uh, I make sure it's a painful experience. It's just how I fight. I can't really do anything about it. But I'm. I'm gonna try to make this shit as quick as possible. But I'm always ready to go five rounds. You know. Oh, yeah. I like go I like going five rounds. Once I start hitting you, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna piece him up. But um I, I can't let this guy take this away from me. It's really important. It's one of those fights where I just I can't lose. I always tell him, Oh, you're gonna win, you can't lose. I'm like, Yeah, you could always lose. I, I can't I gotta tell myself I can't lose because I have to win. Right. And I have I have so many things in front of me. I have this guy in front of me, and I'm not looking past this guy. Because right. I keep talking about what I'm gonna do in the future. People think I'm uh uh I'm looking past this guy, but I know better. Uh I know better, especially the kind of fighter he is. I always look at the people, I analyze their psychology before I walk into the fight. And I know uh, this guy is going to, he's not going to lay down. I'm going to have to put him down. Uh, but I'm okay with that. I'm already being with that. I, I, I understand the nature of the sport. 
I thrive in it. Uh, and I'm just going to go in there and, and give my best performance yet. I'm going to, you know, this is the fight that's going to make you question, like, really, what's, what's you know, who the hell is going to beat this guy? <laughs> I like to hear that. I like to hear that. Now, do you think that uh, for your advancement uh, towards that championship belt, do you feel like you have to make a major statement with this fight and get it done early? Maybe be more aggressive, uh, quick, uh, earlier in the fight. Well, um, I usually fight the way I'm sparring. Mm -hmm. I, I fight the way I spar. I, I don't. I put a lot of pressure. Nobody puts more pressure on me than myself. Like, right. I don't let other people put pressure on me because I live by my own terms. Um, I don't let other people put pressure on me, but I, that doesn't mean that I don't. I, I put too much pressure on myself sometimes people have to remind me hell and put so much pressure on yourself but the pressure comes from me you know and um i don't i'm not gonna go all out there and, and make a sloppy fight because i got pressure you know the pressure that i got I'm, I'm trying to do what i always do i'm trying to look beautiful out there and make it look so easy that you're like i want to fight bkfc too you know <laughs> beautiful and movement, right? That's yeah. what we're talking about. Beautiful yeah. movement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So they're like, man, you know, so, you know, make it look easy, you know. I like uh, it. And, 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 and work hard. You know, I work real hard to make it look easy. We've been doing a really good job at it, you know, and, and that we continue to do it. I'm, I, I plan on being better than my last fight. I plan on being more aggressive, not more sloppy, because I'm not a sloppy fighter. Uh, I'll try not to be a sloppy fighter, but I'm not trying to be more sloppy or put myself in a riskful situation. But I am going to just do the natural progression of being more imposing like a champion is. You know, I'm, I'm building myself up to be a champion because that's 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 what I'm see seeing in the future. So this is a fight. This this is like a, a test for me, you know, a test. And, a, and I, 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 it's a test. And I also get to show showcase my skills, you know, that, that, that I'm ready to be in that championship level, that, I'm, that I could have that championship mentality, that I can go in there and, and, and go for the kill and get it done whenever whenever it presents itself. So. All right, brother. We have we have reached the time where I bring in everybody. It's called Rapid Knockout. I give five questions that have absolutely nothing to do with fighting. Are you ready? All right. Let's do it, Punch. All right. Punch, question number one. He's trying to headbutt you now. <laughs> question number one, favorite food? I love Chinese food. Any Chinese food. <laughs> All, right. All right. Question number two. If it's, it has nothing to do with combat sports, take training and all that out of it. Yeah. If Would there be another sport that you would like to participate or watch? What, do you, what, what would it be? Dude, I don't even really watch any sports. <laughs> I would just sit at home and like crochet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh. So that would be my next question. Question number three would be, what's your favorite hobby? You're going to uh, say crocheting. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. Um, I love reading and writing, man. I'm like addicted to information. So when I'm not when I'm not training, I'm trying to learn something. You know? Gotcha. Not, yep. Gotcha. I like uh, it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> question number four, favorite music, whether that be a genre, uh, an individual artist, a group. Yeah, I got this weird, like, you know, a predisposition for 90s alternatives, you know, like, <laughs> like, like what Nirvana and, and what are we talking about? Everybody, Pearl bro, Jam? Anything, yeah, anything, bro, <laughs> anything, right. that is alternative grunge, post grunge. Just you know, it's just, I got a weakness for the freaking flow, you know, as long as it's got a nice little you know, hook, I, I'm, I'll listen to it. <laughs> Old or new, Alice in Chains. Oh, as a change, oh, oh, for sure, man. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you can't like change it. it, man. I like it. All right, fifth and final question. Whether it be in the sports and entertainment realm or the... Sorry, Poncho snatched the shit right out of my hand. Oh, Poncho, what are you doing? <laughs> All right, whether it be in the sports and entertainment world or your personal side. Yeah. Biggest role model growing up. You know, I used to love Tio Trinidad when I was growing up. You know, now I always tell people, like, I don't have any heroes now. You know, that's how my mentality is. But when I was a kid, I used to love Tio Trinidad. I used to watch all his fights. I used to love his one punch knock of power with his left hook, you know. And he used to always represent Puerto Rico. He had the flag, you know, with all the people behind him. And every time he fought, it was like a huge event in town. We all gathered around freaking big screen TVs to watch him fight, you know. And, and uh, you know, we go through the whole thing with him. And it, it was awesome, you know. It was a great... uh as a young fighter, it was it was some good aspiration for us to be, to be a champion like that, you know. What was your favorite fight of his? 
bro, when he fought Vargas, that that was, and then that whole that whole run when he fought Vargas, and then he fought that other guy, that black guy, he fought afterwards. He's like, um, but that whole run he had that during that time was was amazing. You know, it was just. Yeah, it's just ribbing people. But I remember Fernando Vargas, boy, he taught that boy a lesson. He pretty much ended his career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He did. I mean, he beat the hell out of him. You know? Yeah. And I and I beat a whole I beat people up too, a whole bunch too, you know. <laughs> well, hopefully we get to see that here shortly, just in two short weeks. Oh yeah. I can't wait, man. We're working so hard. It's like, you know, it's there's all roads lead to Biloxi, you know? <laughs> there you go. There you go. El Bandito, Elvin Brito. This is your time to shine with your sponsors, your friends, your families, everybody and anybody you'd like to give a shout out to. The floor is yours, brother. All right, man. I got to give out a shout out to some of my main sponsors. I got a lot of guys giving me a lot of support, a lot of local guys. But I want to give a shout out to Scott Farley, Combat Sports. I mean, I mean, go, go Combat. Um, he's got my, you know, he's always had my back since before I started Bare Knuckle. And he was really nervous about my first Bare Knuckle fight, you know. But then when he saw what we were doing, getting ready, he, he knew that we were going to be good in this. Like, he has my back from the beginning. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to Seattle Wag Tactical. They're, they're like professionals like me. They pride themselves in their, in their handiwork. And uh, they're a perfect sponsor for me, you know. Uh, check them out, Seattle Wag Tactical. Um, also, I want to thank a longtime sponsor, Stripes Bar and Grill in the bar. They sponsored me from the time where I was a neighbor, uh, MMA fighter, fighting there in, in the area, till now where I'm, you know, ocean away. They're still sponsoring me. I still wear their logo in, my, in the local fights. Biloxi, we're right there, so we're going to be representing our people, you know, from over there. They're awesome people, you know, veterans, uh, ex-servicemen, and, they're, you know, the patriots, and, uh, you know, awesome people and their constitution like me you know they believe in the rule of law not the rule of an angry mob you know and uh it's 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 awesome you know I, I, i've been lucky you know all the people that I, I have right now uh you know besides my main sponsors but all the guys that have my back all my friends and my family you know they, they're they're we're behind this right now you know we've been fighting almost 20 years and it's like we're still building still building you'll still getting better still going through you know we've been denied a lot of opportunities uh, and I come short a couple of times, but we never stop step reaching, 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 reaching. Now we're back to this point again. Where we're reaching towards the apex, you know, and there's a huge moment for all of us. It's been a huge effort. So uh, I want to make sure I come in here and do my part. And it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be beautiful carnage. You know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be great. Perfect El Bandido style, you know. <laughs> I love it. I love it, brother. Well, I cannot wait for August 20th to see you back in action in that square circle, man. I'll see you there soon, brother. Yes, sir. Do your thing. And thank you again for coming on with me. As always, you can go to BW Sports 1 to check out all the hap-hap happenings. And for Combat Zone, we're out. Peace.